Hey guys, welcome to a new live session question of the week in our private group. This week we have a pretty cool question regarding the marketing science professional exam and it has to do with correlation or basically trying to figure out if there's a, how do you interpret the correlation between a lift or a, um, yeah, a lift study versus engagement rates. And so how do you know whether, you know, how do you read this kind of reports? Um, so for this question, it comes from the, as I mentioned, the marketing certified marketing science professional. It says, refer to the chart in the comment. So the chart in the comment is basically this one. In this um, graph, what it's saying is it gives us on the y-axis engagement rate and on the x-axis favorability, favorability lift. So an analyst in a technology company aggregates 42 brand lift studies that contain favor favorability questions. The analyst plots these studies against the engagement rate that the ads received. The engagement rate is a summation of likes, comments, and shares over the total reach of the campaign. Each dot in the chart is a separate campaign. What is the correct interpretation for this chart? regarding the correlation between engagement rates and favorability lift. So you basically have four potential answers. You have weak positive correlation, you have strong positive correlation, no correlation, or the weak negative correlation. If you look at this specific graph, what this is basically saying is that each point that you see here basically tells us the engagement rate that the campaign received so in this case like two point something and the favorability lift so what you're trying what, what this is what you're trying to analyze is whether if i'm if i increase the engagement in my campaigns does my lift increase as well so if people are interacting with my campaigns more do my lift studies like the impact that i have with my the, whether it's brand or whether in this case like favorability within your brand within your um brand study does it actually increase more if more if more people are engaging do more people recognize my brand afterwards um, and is that a positive negative or is there no correlation if you think about it and if you can go back to if you look at math basic math but usually when you look at why is mx plus b and b is going to be you know what moves around the your y-axis and your slope which is m this is what determines whether there's the, the correlation right and and the slope of your of a graph and so if you try to graph this here usually let's say this is one two three four one two three four and we graph this here and this is my y-axis and this is my x-axis and this is one you know that one is going to be your b your m you know for every y change so every time i go up one i move one as well so m is going to be one as well so y is equal to one m plus plus one and that's going to be, uh, sorry, 1x plus 1. And that's basically the formula for the specific graph. So what I'm trying to determine is the slope. And the slope will tell me, well, you know, as y or x moves, is there a correlation or no correlation? Is there a positive? Is my slope this way? Or is my slope neutral, right? So as y moves or x moves, is there a change in X as well? And how how big is that change? And the way you measure that, that difference in change is through my slope. And so you already have the graph here, the line here. This is the line of the correlations. And if you look, it's basically straight. A straight line, what it means is that there, there's basically no correlation between engagement rate and favor, favorability lift. Meaning, if more people interact, 
people won't necessarily have recognized the brand more, whether it's more or less engagement. If you look at the the you know where the dots are, they're basically scattered all over your graph. You have a 10% favorability lift with 0.3 engagement rate. You have eight with 0.3, but also with 2.5. You have 0.5, you have 6% favorability with 0.3, 0.5, It's basically all over the place. So a straight line, what a straight line means is basically your plot is Y. If you go back to M X plus B, what this is saying is that, you know, your your M is zero. So Y is equal to B. And that slope, in this case, the graph or your, your B is this line right here. So there's really no correlation. If Y changes, X won't change. If X changes, it, it, in the other way around either. So what kind of correlations do you have? And these is how uh, correlations usually work. Right, you have a perfect positive correlation. If you go back to your B again, um, if you go back to your M, which is basically your, you know, that correlation that you're looking for, it's going to be the difference in Y divided by the difference in X. So as you move, you know, Y, how much do you move X? And that's what your correlation is trying to determine. So a, a perfect positive correlation means that it's moving up. It means that for every one that I go here, X also moves one. A highly high positive correlation and a low positive correlation means that, you know, 0.5, it's not as straight as you would think, but it's more like it's, it starts going down, right? No correlation. You have a straight line, negative, you start going down, down, and then you have a perfect line as well. So why is it one? Because for every, you know, as y moves one, x moves one as well. And for negative, as y goes down one, x moves one as well. And that's why you have, you know, as y goes down, x moves one. If you look at your slope, as y goes one up, x doesn't change and so if you go back to your question is there a weak positive correlation i'm going to say you know maybe if we look at this graph you could say well potentially right if they hadn't given us the line you could kind of say that the correlation is a little bit tilted this way it might not be straight it might be tilted but it's uh, you know um is there a strong positive correlation? A strong correlation? Definitely not. Like there's definitely no strong co correlation here. Is there no correlation? Yeah. I mean, you have a straight line. Is there a weak negative correlation? Also no. Like, um, and so if you look, if you go back again, I would say that because they gave you a line that is already straight, meaning uh, you don't have a slope, in this case, no slope, and no slope means no correlation. So the correct answer is no correlation. Uh, I think if they hadn't given you this line right here, you could kind of say that there's a weak positive correlation going up. But because they already gave you the slope and they already show you the line, uh, the correct answer is no correlation. Your slope is zero. You have a straight line, uh, meaning you know um, as engagement goes up or down we really don't know where my lift will land so if i have you know an engagement of 0.5 percent we don't really know if we're going to have a favorability of four or ten and if we have you know same thing if we have a favorability of six we don't really know if we're going to have engagement of 0.2 or plus one percent and so that's how basically you tackle um, this type of question. Uh, I would say it has more to do with understanding uh, slopes and lines uh, and how correlation works in the sense of what are you trying to measure when you are doing correlations between two, um, basically two variables, right? Variable Y and variable X. 
when they talk about correlation, what you're really trying to determine is how does the slope of the line move between those two variables? And in this case, what you're trying to say is, do I have a perfect positive correlation? Is it negative or is there no correlation? Meaning your slope is zero, right? So my slope in a positive correlation is gonna be one. My slope in a perfect negative correlation is gonna be minus one. So if you look at your, you know, y is equal to one, x plus b. And in this case, you're gonna have y is equal to minus one, x plus b. And obviously in the middle, you're gonna have y is equal to zero. Um, why? Because your m, you know, as y changes, x changes. In this case, you have per perfect positive correlation. In this case, you have perfect negative correlation. And in the middle, you have basically no correlation at all between both graphs, which is the case for um, this specific question. So for those of you taking the marketing science exam, I think this is something that is definitely fundamental to understand and know um, with how to tackle those type of, of um, questions. So if you have more questions or comment, make sure you um, ask or question at the bottom of our um, of our private group. Make also sure that you follow us on our YouTube channel. I'm constantly uploading videos so that you can learn about Facebook content. I would say definitely make sure you look at this video, correlation versus causation, the difference. I would say that video is key if you're taking the marketing science exam because it's definitely important to understand the difference between a lift and an A-B test and also causation and correlation because they're not the same. And you definitely want to know that before you take your exam. So thanks again for listening, guys. Um, welcome. To, uh, I hope that this helped uh, in trying to better understand how to tackle these type of questions for the marketing science professional. I know not a lot of people are taking them. But thanks again for listening, and I'll see you next week.